I'm Natalie Savona, mum, author and food expert. I'm passionate about how we can eat healthily, save money and be more thoughtful about where our food comes from. I'll be meeting the people pioneering new ways food can be grown, sold and eaten. Putting people before profit and creating a more responsible food system. These are the Food Rebels. I'm here in Brighton at Hisby, a supermarket with a difference. Hisby's on a mission to change the way supermarkets operate. Instead of maximising short-term profit, Hisby promises a better deal for suppliers, for customers and for employees. And they prioritise local and sustainable products. I'm going to meet the sisters that set up Hisby and find out whether this is the future of food retail. Well, I'm Amy Anslow, this is my sister Ruth Anslow, and we co-founded Hisby Food CIC. Hisby stands for How It Should Be, and it's about um, reinventing supermarkets for the 21st century. And this is our pilot store where we've been testing out the concept and all the ideas around that. So how does Hisby work? What makes it different? There are four big ways uh, which Hisbury is different to a normal supermarket. The first way is that we are a social enterprise and we make a fair profit. We put our profit into customers, suppliers and staff rather than shareholders and directors' pockets. The second way is that we help grow the local economy. So 50% of what we spend stays in Sussex. The third way is that we create happy communities. We're really about fostering happiness and friendship and community in the store. And finally, we stand up for a more responsible food industry. So we're really into ethical, fair and sustainable sourcing and trading. Tell me about your suppliers and the localness of it. So from a supply perspective, we just get as much local stuff in as we can. We have about 89 um, suppliers here and 76% of them are local. So it's all about getting as much local food in as possible. And then we also pledge to uh, support and employ local people. And we spend as much as we can on local services. And most of our money stays in Sussex. And why is that important? Uh, it's important because we want to have a, a positive contribution to um, Brighton's local economy. It's important because um, we want to support other businesses and particularly other social enterprises locally. It's about putting as much back into the, the local economy as possible. When you spend a pound in one of the big four supermarkets, about 95 pence goes outside of the local economy. When you spend a pound in Hisby, about 50 pence stays in the local economy. So there's a big difference. And we achieve that by using... Um, local businesses, and particularly favour, favour other social enterprises, but local businesses um, to carry out all the necessary uh, services that, that it takes to, to run the store. So why don't you take me and show me what you're doing on the ground in the shop? Yeah, okay, let's, let's go. go. Dairy is obviously a big one. We need to be mindful of, of, of where dairy products come from and how the animals involved in that supply chain are treated. All of our local milk is from Downsview Farm. Um, they don't homogenise the milk, so it's much healthier for us. It's fresher. And the great thing about um, Downsview is they do all their bottling and pasteurisation on site, which means that we can get it fresh from the farm the very next day and it's all bottled on site. Give me the lowdown on this, the nitty gritty in terms of cost and what the customer's paying and what the supplier's getting from, okay. from the milk. So milk's a really good example of what we do because the dairy industry is a bit notorious for dairy farmers getting ripped off and, and going out of business because they're forced to sell their products uh, for less than what it costs to make them. So when you buy this milk here for 55p, um, 41 pence goes to the dairy farmer. And that means that um, she can keep her, her herd at a really high welfare living standards. And it means that she can make a decent living. And we just think that's, that's just the basis of how it should be. I'm Sarah Farms and I'm a partner with my brother and my father in Downsview Farm. And tell me what you do, I mean obviously we've got a dairy herd behind us. Yeah. We process our own milk and we make our own ice cream and sorbet so, and we have lots of customers, um, pubs, restaurants and a supermarket, Hisby. 
And what is it about working with Hisby that's different from if you were working with one of the big supermarkets? They care. They actually care about giving us um, a, pr a decent price. If you send it away to a normal dairy and um, they use it, they only give us 21p a litre, whereas Hisby will give us 33p a litre. So by selling to Hisby, you're making about 50% more yes. than by selling to a dairy? Yes. That's a big difference. Isn't it, it is, yes. <laughs> and it's a difference between us going under and us staying afloat. Goodness. It's as simple as that. Hello, lady. Before I knew it, I was helping Sarah's brother Ralph milk the cows. <laughs> Left or right hand, so you put your hand under there, and then what you do is you put that Just front two on there. And it sort of suctions on. Yep. That's it. Perfect. When are you taking over? That's it. Tomorrow morning. Okay, no problem, five o'clock. With Hisby, it's a supermarket that really values the fact that you value your animals yeah. and that you're not pushing them? No, we don't push our cows at all. You know, we only 6,000 litres in lactation a year. So, um, no, we don't, because a lot of herds try and get eight, nine, up to 11,000 litres. We're, we're low input, low output, but we try and look after them the best we can. They get, well, I think they get well looked after. So they live in there in the winter. In there. Milk there. Milk there. Comes around there. And in here. And then into the bottle. Yep. Into and the van and away. Yep. How long is it before this is in his Uh Well, it's in here within an hour. Into here. And then his bee tomorrow morning. So we're talking about 18 hours from oh, the no. cow walking out the shed to it on the yep. supermarket shelf. Yeah, absolutely. 18 hours, 15 miles. That's right. That's pretty fresh and local. And it's fresh and it's done every time. Every delivery, it's fresh milk. So, right, so that is a good bottle of milk for everyone concerned. Yeah. Right, I'll put it back. Breakfast cereals are a really interesting category because you've got a product that, that starts off as a really natural product but the problem is that the big brands highly over process breakfast cereal because they want it to sit on the shelf you know for up to two years and make it easy to move around and sell so we deliberately choose brands that uh, that care and it's part of our strategy to choose brands that that um, are ethical but when it comes to packaged grocery and brands um, we look to the ethical consumer index so they for 20 30 years have been successfully looking into brands and their parent companies and and uh, examining how they use their profits and uh, how they treat the supply chain um, so they are really the standard to look for when when choosing our brands so we stop the brands that score highly uh, on that on that index um, and also that, that remain within an affordable bracket for customers as well so we won't just go straight for the most expensive version because we are about you know making a, an affordable shop here so we do local foods and wine in fact Jack's probably best place to tell us about that he's uh, head of uh, supply and operations yeah so when we opened the store we started with quite a small alcohol section it was something we wanted to offer our customers same as they get at the supermarket as we've progressed, we've sort of noticed the real demand from our customers for the small sort of artisan local breweries that they can't really get them outside of the pub sort. And I know that some of these guys, I mean, they're real small, small producers that don't actually get the opportunity to put their products on any other shelf. Yeah. So the money that we can redirect to them and help them grow their business, it's, it's about sort of supporting that little community of manufacturers and producers out there that need that support. So it's really important to us that the suppliers are able to sort of continue their practices and look after their animals in a way that works for them. If we start pressuring the supplier in terms of cost because we want to earn more margin, you know, it'll have an impact. Someone's going to have to cut that corner somewhere else. So we let the suppliers set their price. We work with them to come to a price that's fair. Um, and then we put on sort of a standard margin, which covers our costs and the running of the store. 
and then offer that end price to the customer. Hisby is such an ambitious, comprehensive project. Every product has had to pass strict criteria to get on its shelves. We invited chef Doug McMaster, who runs local zero waste restaurant Silo, to cook up a feast using Hisby produce. Um, so I'm Doug, uh, I own a restaurant just around the corner from Hisby here. It's, uh, it's called Silo and it's uh, better known as a uh, zero waste restaurant, uh, which means that we uh, deal directly with the, the producers and uh, we, everything that comes into Silo is um, uh, there's no packaging on anything and uh, Hisby is great because it offers loads of solutions to zero waste and um, yeah later on we're going to be cooking up a bit of a storm highlighting some of those um, uh, zero waste uh, ingredients. And who's going to be at the feast? Uh, we've got some of our key suppliers actually, suppliers that have been with us and Hisby from the start. So uh, Will from Sheffield Farm, uh, we've got some, uh, some of his smoked bacon which is going to act as a seasoning to a dish of cauliflower uh, which come from um, Finn and Farm and uh, again Hisby um, uh, rely on Finn and Farm for vegetables and, um, and then uh, we've got Downsview Dairy who uh, they're coming along and they've been really key to silo um, getting dairy, uh, dairy in such as milk and cream was one of the biggest challenges when we opened and they were the only dairy supplier, organic dairy supplier in Sussex that were able to do it zero waste. I'm going to let you get on with doing some shopping here, getting what you need. Thanks Doug, see you later. This is where Hisby and Silo meet. This principle is zero waste. Um, so you basically, instead of having dozens and dozens and dozens of plastic packets, uh, you've just li literally eliminated all of, all of that. So somebody can come in with a jar, a container that's endlessly reusable and fill up whatever they need uh, and then leave and just literally go on and on and on forever. Um, right now I've not got a jar so I'm going to use this bag but that can go into our uh, compost machine so I'm not too worried about that. Um, and yeah, it's just dead simple. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Very simple. While Doug got on with his shop for the feast, I was on my way to some of Hisby suppliers. Join me after the break when I meet them. Welcome back to Food Rebels. I've been in Brighton at Hisby, an ethical supermarket on a mission to reinvent food retail. After spending the morning in store, I headed into the Sussex countryside to meet some of Hisby's suppliers. I was on my way to visit Hisby's meat supplier, Will Sheffield, down the road at Sheffield Farms in Mayfield. I always try and, f and, and let the animals basically um, have as much sort of space and, and sort of live as, as sort of naturally as they possibly can. So this is all very free range. Um, as you can see, you know, they're just mooching about. They're, they're, they're meant to be outside. They're meant to be, a, be out in foraging and in the wild. And, you know, they're, they're sort of, it's what they're meant to do. And in terms of the final product, because they are here for meat, what impact do you think that that has on the meat? I think it gives you a better texture, a better flavour. So there's a sort of higher fat content. They, it's a much more natural product because it's taken much longer to to mature. It's a completely different product. If you if you sort of taste a chop from one of these pigs and compare it to a chop from, you know, a, a sort of really intensive farm, there will be a, a huge difference. So shall we give them their elevenses then? Indeed. Yeah, I think we should. They're getting okay. a bit. Hungry. Yeah, Did you want to do it? Go on then. All right. After we fed the pigs, Will showed me how he makes his smoked bacon. So we got some oak chippings on here, and then obviously I'm going to give it a bit of a go, a head start with some. Um, with some straw. What we're doing is cold smoking, not, not hot smoking. So it's not like we're, we, we don't want to cook product at the end of it. We want something that has got the smoky flavour um, and, uh, and can then be cooked um, at a later date. So that seems to be going quite nicely. 
So if we close this up, it's all highly technical, as you can see. Yep. And then that will encourage the smoke to come out of there. Okay, that's smoking really well now. So if you don't mind putting, popping that in there. And I will put the lid on just to encourage the smoke to stay in there a bit more, like so. And then all I do is just keep an eye on it throughout the day. So that'll stay in there for about 12 hours. Um, and uh, by the end of the day, it'll be have a lovely oak smoked flavor. So I'm now gonna take it out of the, the muslin. So this might well end up on the shelves in the supermarket that is Hisby. This would very likely end up there, yes. And how is it working with Hisby as a client? Really well, since, they've, since we've started supplying them, it's basically changed a lot of what we do here. Prior to that, um, we weren't pro doing any of the processing. We weren't cutting much of the meat at all. It was either going off direct to a local butcher or to, you know, basically to market. And what are the benefits to you as a supplier of working with a company that works like Hisby does? A lot of it is, it is the satisfaction of knowing that basically this pack that, that we've, we've prepared now will actually go into someone's home. You could go into Hisby and you could actually buy that pack and the next person to handle that meat is going to be the person that eats it. It's all about appreciation. It is so much more rewarding to sell to people that actually understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Back in Brighton, Chef Doug McMaster was preparing a feast at his restaurant Silo using his bee produce, including Will's smoked bacon. Silo opened about 60 weeks ago, I think now. It uh, got its name as a zero waste restaurant. It's a lot more than that. It's uh, the idea of pure foods born from clean farming, and that simply means uh, things grown in the way they should have been grown, organically or in a very natural way. And uh, we deal directly with those producers, suppliers, and we don't try and compromise flavours and complicate the food system. We just do it in a very organic, simple way. So this is the, uh, the, the cauliflower steak. This is the centre of the cauliflower. All the cauliflower has been used. Um, we've got the... Um, the sort of outer parts of the cauliflower that we just simply boiled. Uh, the, uh, the middle of the cauliflower, the steak has been roasted. And then we've got the smoked bacon, the savoury porridge, and some of the red onions. We invited Jack, Ruth and Amy from Hisby to the feast, as well as the suppliers we'd met earlier. It wasn't long before conversation turned to supermarkets. Have you ever supplied any of the big supermarkets? No, Tesco's came down and saw us and they said it wasn't big enough. That was a blessing, <laughs> in the end. Is that right when they do a, like special offers and they say, right, this week we're doing two for one on your strawberries or milk or whatever, and you, as the producer, have to... Yes, yes that's yeah. a stomach it. I mean, that's, I just couldn't believe that. So we've been taught, haven't we, to save money on food in the same way as you should save money on home insurance, get the cheapest flight, you know, get the cheapest mobile phone deal, get the cheapest food, but it's not the same. We should be buying the best food we can Absolutely. afford. That's right. And what I think is interesting is I think people are starting to see this stuff. I think the tide is changing, and certainly since we've been in business, we've seen people people's awareness of some of this stuff is growing. I think with social media and a cynicism that the new generations have got around big companies and big brands because they see the backstory of it more. The truth's out there, you know. I think that the, 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 especially, you know, the younger people we see, the students that come in, they know a lot of these issues. They know about what's going on and they, they see uh, and they look at some of these big brands with a lot of cynicism. They, they're not just taking in yeah. the messages they're given. It might be a while before every supermarket follows Hisby's sustainable model, but with Ruth and Amy's determination, I wouldn't put it past them to make it happen. Next week on Food Rebels, I join an army of 300 volunteers feeding 5,000 people with food that would have gone to waste.